Yo, what it do, man? This is Grindface and the Therapist, man. I'm Demetrius. And I'm Sania. We've been together for 23 years, 24, but who's counting? On today's episode 17, we're going to get on the topic of the way people view you. Sania, start it off the, on, on this topic for us. It already could be the way we view others. The way we view others. I mean, however you want to call it. I think many times perception is based on one's experience. Meaning, like, go ahead. Yeah, meaning that sometimes we view people based on our own experience. So, for example, let's say if you had a parent that always screamed or talked in a certain tone. So when, you know, you, you kind of, it made you feel sad or it made you feel inferior. So the moment someone speaks to you in that same tone, you automatically relate it to your experience with your mother. So you begin to perceive them like as an aggressive person, when in reality, that may not even be true. You know, I've learned in life, people are going to perceive you based on their own experience, whether true or false, um, whether right or wrong. It is just what it is. And I think it's, it is, it serves no purpose to try to prove to people who you are. Or please people. Same thing, I guess. Prove, please, argue, you know, uh, constantly try to assure people. Because the reality of the situation is people are going to see you based on what they want to see. You know, you could be the greatest person in the world. I think in life it's unrealistic to say that anybody's perfect. I think we all have flaws, right? Yes. What's What's... Good to someone else may be bad. What's bad to someone else may be good. It just depends on the person who you're asking. But I think in life, you know, you can't please. The the saying sounds so cliche, but the whole saying you can't please everyone is true because people are going to see you based on what they want to see. Like, I, I agree. for example, you can have, well, I don't even want to use the glass halfway full, halfway empty, but it's a good analogy. We can all go outside and see that the sky is blue, right? The sky is blue. But then you may have some people that's like, but I don't like that it's blue. Or it's not a perfect blue. Or it's not really a certain shade of blue. Because they're going to base it based on what they want to see. And it's the same thing in life. You could be good to people. You could be nice to people. You could be whatever to people. But if that's not what they want to see, that's not what they're going to see. So to keep trying to be something in hopes of people will see who you are is unrealistic. So I've just come to the conclusion in life. Well, I've always been like this. Just be you. But either they're going to like you or they love you. You know, are they not? At the end and of that's the day, a reality. It's, it's and I like, think so many times people. You can't please everybody. You can't please, please everyone. Please yourself. Now, there, there's a thing if, if, if you're a certain way and it's not necessarily healthy because I, I don't like when people say well that's just me well just because that's you doesn't make it okay either right there are things that we should always be improving and growing and perfecting or bettering ourselves so I don't think you should use the excuse of that's just me when it's an unhealthy behavior or you know a wrong way of going about but things or treating but people who was saying who's judging it that it's an unhealthy behavior let me okay for example like, like when you're just a rude person it's like well that's just me Okay, for example, there's a difference between being assertive, outspoken, outspoken yeah. and rude, right? Assertive to me is basically setting boundaries and telling people exactly how you feel, right? When asked or when confronted with certain situations. Now, rude is people say, well, I'm just outspoken, but you're giving your opinion when not solicited, when not asked. That's rude. Like if you're just saying, oh, you don't look nice in that outfit. Well, no one asked you. Yes. So now it becomes rude. But if someone's asking you and then you're giving your honest opinion, that's the difference. So when you're just being rude and it's like you can't just keep saying, well, I'm just outspoken. That's me. No, you're just being rude and no one's asking for your opinion. And you need to kind of change that. But I'm saying just in life in general, right? You just for social media, we could say you could post something, right? Someone doesn't know if it's true. They don't know if it's false. They don't know if it's a joke. They don't know if it's real. But they're going to see it based on their, experience. their own experience yes. and whatever they want to. Not thinking this may be fake. 
this may be real or whatever else. It's just, this is what I see. This is what I think. So this is what it is. And this is why I'm so big. I had a great conversation with my cousin last night. She's much younger than me and I haven't seen her in years. And we connected on Christmas and, um, she, she says something that's so true. I told her, you know, used to be a hot mess. And she said, you know, you walked in on that version of me. And I love that analogy. I said, I had to use that because even in that we'll see someone in a certain state and then forget that's just that moment. For example, you may walk in on someone where they were going through something, or you may have a conversation with somebody when they were upset, but is that really the overall character of the person? Or is that just what you want to see? Agreed. We all go through um, hard times and bad, bad situations, and, you know, and, and then with the internet thing, yeah, it, it's funny because, you know, they don't know, they, they don't know the concept of entertainment. Uh, I, I guess people feel like what they see on the internet is just automatically real. I don't know. I don't, I don't necessarily think that. I just think that people like to find the negative in other people. Oh, yes. It's, people it's, like to find the negative in people. Okay. People like to find the negative in people, even when there's no negative to be seen. Not even in people, just in, in anything. You know what I'm saying? Just the the um, majority but, of the people on the internet is searching for the negative shit to the comment. And, because I like, know, I think people like to discredit. Yes. They yeah. like to discredit because I know my imperfections. So if I discredit someone else, it also showcase their imperfections. We all have imperfections, right? But I think you should walk in a way of life where I walk in a way of life now that I see people according to how God wants me to see them, right? Not good, not bad, but what it is. I believe this is my, my thought process. Everybody in life is either a blessing or a curse. And when I when I say that, it's either you've been sent to bless me or you've been sent to curse me. Because either God sent you or the enemy sent you. Now I'm going spiritual, right? But either way, you were sent by someone. You were sent on a task or a purpose for something, right? But this is what people do many times, right? Let's say a blessing is being sent. They are being among certain people or God has brought certain people into their lives I see it as a toy, right? So you would get a toy, brand new, used, whatever. You will give it to a kid. The kid is like, hey, I hate this toy. I don't like this toy. And then you'll give an, the same toy to another kid, and they're very appreciative, and love value. it, and value it. And this is what happens in life. We don't value people based on our own experiences are based on what we think a person is instead of seeing a person for who truly they are. And I say this all I, the time. I think people, when they get too much access to you, they they um they overlook your value. You know, because That's they see true. you every day. That's they, true. It, it's like taking a spouse for granted. That's it, true. You got them every day, so you really don't see the, where they add into your life until they're gone. And I think that's that, that's with even any type of friendship, family members, when you're too close, they, they tend to I don't to think friends forget, take you for, for... Forget. I can't say any of my friends, but I don't see my friends every day either. I don't think... I think many times your, friend, your friends, real friends, see your value. I think it's typically families. I think spouses can take people, each other for granted. And I even think, your children. Yeah. I think... Well... I'm going to say, I'm not going to say it's not friends. I'm going to just say I've had that experience with my friends because I don't see my friends every day. You know, we don't talk every day, but when we talk, we talk for a long time because we're, we're connecting because we have our own personal things in our lives. I just think in life, we forget to value people and we're so quick to look at the negative that we forget the positive because everyone has flaws, Right. And I think it just, the reason why I wanted to talk about this, because having a conversation with my cousin yesterday, it made me look and think about a lot of things. I always like to reflect. I learn from everything, every situation, every kid, every person. I don't care if it's a baby, I'm going to learn. I'm going to learn something. You know, I think when you become too arrogant to learn from people's situation and things, I don't think you should be on earth anymore because if you know everything, what else is there to do? I think you should be growing and learning in every conversation, in every situation. I'm always learning. I'm always thinking of ways to improve myself just as a person. And so having this conversation, 
and just little things I've been through recently. It's like, okay, God, let me step back. Let me start to interact and deal with people according to what you say. You know, not my heart, not what I think, not how I could, you know, because I'm a, I'm a humanitarian at heart. I think every person deserves it all. But I also understand that's an unhealthy balance and it's, it's not effective due to having boundaries, right? And so it's like, okay, let me, let me see these people interact with these people according to what you would want me to do. Because I value people. I believe relationships are currency. But then I also understand based on their makeup, they may not understand that, that concept. You know, I don't walk in a nail shop and have somebody do my nails and just think this is an Asian nail technician, right? This is a potential relationship. This relationship can be currency. I don't just look at her as the help. So are you saying you're an opportunist? No. I'm saying I see everyone with a potential of being of value. I don't just walk in and say, okay, this is the waiter. They're just waiting on my waiting on me for my food. I see everybody as a person, right? Not as their the service that they're doing, but as an individual. Many times I think we see people as what they do. Yeah, job title. Yeah, not a person. And, yeah. So it's not about the opportunity. It's about giving everybody the opportunity to present themselves. Not like, oh, I'm going to just write you all because, you know, you're the nail technician. But then I also understood there has to be a balance too, right? And this is why I said now I allow God to let me see what he wants me to see this person and what purpose they serve to me in this life. I lost you. No, I'm listening. Amen. I, well, I'm sure. <laughs> Amen. Where are we at? Church? That's what you're trying. You're preaching to the folks. No, I'm not preaching. I'm just saying. Just, okay, for... Value people for who they are, not the titles they hold and the titles they throw around. I hate when people try to throw around titles, man. That, that shit is so irritating me because I would shit on your title before anything. I'm, I think you should respect people's no, titles, especially if it's earned. That's good for you, but not me. Don't, I don't think don't it defines you. you. your title. It's like, go sit down somewhere. Nobody gives a fuck about your title. Why is that, though? Because a lot of people, when they throw around their titles, they feel like they're above you. They, they, they That's hide. based on, see, you speaking they out hide. of your experience. They, they hold higher. See, you speaking out of, because you're generalizing a whole no, group of people. If, if we had a barbecue, why the hell are you throwing your title oh, around? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You There's know what no saying? point. Now, if, if it depends we, on the setting. If we at the job location, at the church or something, I could re, I understand you throwing your title around. But when you had a damn near pool or some shit and you throwing your title around, like, come on now. When it's unrelated be, to business. Just be regular Joe. You know what I'm saying? It's like, come on now. Because the people use that because they, they don't have nothing else to Well, I think that's a sense uphold. of insecurity. Yeah. I think in business, if that's their title, that's their title. You know, they're yeah, telling if, you who they are. If, if we in a business setting, I understand that. But if we at some private somewhere else and you just throwing your titles around, come on, man. It's like. It doesn't make sense. You, you're trying to get some recognition and make you feel important. So if I'm at the grocery saying? store and we just happen yes. to have a casual conversation, yes. then I'm just Jamie. Yes. You're, I'm, just, you're just Bill, Bob, whoever. Yeah, exactly. So when you start throwing your titles around at private stuff, it's like you're looking for some kind of acceptance to me. That's how I take it. Some approval. Look at me. I, I got a title on my name. Treat me better. You know? That's how I look at it. I'm going to say I think it's the mentality of the person. One thing I've learned is I don't look at the action. I look at the intent, right? Um, because your action may not align up to what a person thinks your intentions are. And I think this is how so many times we write people off and we get mad at people because we look at the act and not the intent. We, we, look, we don't look at the heart. Because sometimes, let's say you're in a setting and somebody say, I'm, I'm Dr. Billy Bob or whatever, right? But they could be so used to saying that every day, all day, that it just comes natural. And they're like, oh, I forgot I'm at a barbecue. You know, and 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 somebody can look and be like, oh, that's arrogant. And that's why I say we judge people based on our experience, not the reality of what's really going on. Because we think they're being arrogant. But they may say, hey, I'm Dr. Billy Bo Job or whatever 10 times a day. And so now that they're at the barbecue, they forgot to transition from business to a barbecue. And now you're looking at them arrogant. And that's not even their intent. And this is why I always give people the benefit of the doubt and the opportunity to explain themselves. I'll always ask a question, even though there's times where I already know the answer, but I always give you the opportunity to answer the question to allow you to basically explain it before I just be like, okay, I, this is just what it is. 
the the thing that annoys me is when people assume and they don't ask me. You know, somebody recently asked me like, oh, you know, I wasn't talking to you because I didn't think you liked me. Well, why you didn't think that? Because people tell me that. Did I tell you that? Did you ask me that? They found out it was a lie, you know, but at the end of the day, it's like, I don't think you can ever have an issue with someone if you never address the issue or told them that it was an issue. Because sometimes you're looking at the action, but the intent doesn't align yeah, with what they're doing. And on that, that's how people f- fall for it. Because the best line they tell you, I won't, don't t- don't say nothing, but whoop 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 whoop. What do you mean? Like that's what people do. It's like they don't now. They'd be like, I'm gonna tell you this. Um, Sania don't like you, but don't say nothing. You know what I'm saying? Because see, I'm not that you, person. So now you walking I'm not that around person. feeling like she don't like you. I'm not this that person, person. Told you a lie, but, and you you you. But that's you, on you. You trying to hold your loyalty to the person that told you. you, and you just fed into the lie. You know Th- that's and, on you because I'm a so firm believer. That's a believer. red flag. When people say don't say nothing, that's a red flag to me. You know Anytime like, nigga, no, you're I will speak tell on what you're you, talking about. I'm going to ask the person to give them the benefit of the doubt, unless I just feel like it's just going to be some drama. But I just feel like you can't come and tell me something about someone without me knowing the facts, right? Because at the end of the day, you may just be telling me things based on about this person, based on your own experience. Where, where the and people get mad at me because I'm like a fact checker. Where are the facts? You know what I mean? Is it true or is it not? Or is this based on an assumption? What specifically happened that you could say this is a legitimate, truthful statement about this person? But my thing is, if you can't stand on what you you out here saying, they don't say Then nothing. I feel like don't say it. You know what I'm saying? If you don't want to be confronted on what you run around spreading... Then sit down and shut the hell up. But but that's people though, oh, right? Shit. People like to assassinate people's character in private, but in public, they're not gonna own or admit to what they're saying. So shout out to all the people that assassinate my character in private. I know it. <laughs> they just told me don't say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, shit. I think people's character is always getting assassinated, whether you know it or not. Oh, always. Um, and I think that's just life because, again, people are going to perceive you based on their experience and what they think. Not always facts, you know, but assumptions. Because if you didn't go to that person and ask, and I'm not going to say people are always going to tell the truth because many times they're going to lie and make you think they're not doing what you already know they're doing. But you just people actions tell on themselves. It does. The way they move, the way they do shit, the way they treat other people, that tells tells you everything right there. It does, but sometimes you'll never, depending on the settings you meet or know people, and you'll never get to see the real deal. They'll never show you the real deal. All right, so what? Um, you slowing down on this? So where where are you trying to guide this to? Basically, so, uh, is, is my video triggered you on something. All the comments, people talking shit about my video. I don't even know what you're talking about. Mm, they mad about my video again. What video? Excuse me, y'all. I'm drinking my um uh, Christmas my Christmas video. They upset. I guess my reaction wasn't um uh, I was ungrateful. I'm just kind of mad. And the thing is, it's so funny because people don't understand the point. I get paid off content. And I was just about to say that I don't understand like, at this point why <laughs> people don't understand you're a content creator. Yeah, it's just like if you you are a secretary. You are a doctor. You are you're clocking in to work, it, and if people haven't gotten that by now, I I just don't know what to say. No, they not. They slow. That's okay. I don't. Again, I don't think it has anything to do with people being slow. It, it I triggers, just think it triggers no, something within them. That's what I'm I saying. Think That's why I people do it. like to see the negative and point out the things they don't like in people based on their own experience and it because it, what i say trigger emotion when you when you make content the key is to trigger emotion make somebody feel like if that was me i would have did this i would have and that caused engagement i get them all the time with that shit trigger emotion what what, what what's your what, what you do you um provoke thought provoke thought and i trigger emotion <laughs> Yeah, I like conversations <laughs> that are thought provoking. I like to make people think. I'll ask a question I already know the answer to, but I just want you to think about what you're saying. And I like people to challenge my thought process as well, too. Not in a negative way. I just think you should always be growing. You know, and I think 
I don't know. I think for this year, finding peace for me, and I, I would challenge or encourage anybody to do this. When you meet people, family or around people, old people, new people, tap into God and see why this person is in your life and who is this person. What they bring it into your life. Yeah. Like, are they, what is the purpose of the relationship or the connection? And, and I'm, I'm finding peace. Well, I think I've always done that. I've always done that, but every new venture requires new things. For example, like when you first ride a bike, you may fall a few times, right? You're going to be unbalanced. You're going to be shaky. It's not until you keep getting back up on that thing. You're going to basically Realize, okay, I got this. And then before you know it, you're riding the bike. Then you're doing but it's, wheelies. Ugh. Yeah, but it's a process, right? When you first start driving a car, it's like, oh, I'm nervous. I don't want to drive the freeway. All this different stuff. When you first start dating a person, you're get, it's always new. You're always learning new things. And in the beginning, you don't know if you got it, you got it. But then, then hold on, because you're saying you always learning new things. You didn't let me finish. No, no, but, just, hold on. Yeah, you, but at the time, you, you can't learn no more. You rode the bike so long, so you know everything about the bike. You drove a car so much, you know everything. You dated this person, you know you, everything. You're not listening to what I'm saying. In life, with new experiences, you're always going to be learning new things. So you didn't let me finish. I'm getting to the point. Starting a business, I've been in business over a year. I think in March, April, it'll be two years with this business. I'm learning new things. You're learning how to interact with people. You're learning what to do. You're you're figuring it out. You're you're wobbling on the bike. You're you know what I'm saying. And then there's things that I'm learning over the year that I would never do again. There's things that I'm learning that okay I'll try that again, or I'll I'll tweak this or I'll do that or you know one of the biggest things in business that I've always hated is I never wanted to see my staff as employees or just an employee. You know what I mean? I saw them as people. I saw them as potential relationships, currency. And I just realized that God had to show me you can't view it like that. You have to view it as they're coming here getting a check. And that's how they view it as a job where you're putting more out into it because you're seeing people as people in currency. They're not necessarily looking at you or at a place in the company the same way you're viewing them. So with everything you're learning, right? You're evolving and you got to understand too with different people in different settings, you got to know what they're there for. And that's what I said. The peace I'm finding in God is because I've always done this and that's what I'm going back to. I've always basically um, sought God on the people who I connect with or I meet or, you know, what is the purpose of this? But with new things, it requires new education in this new thing because I've always viewed people as relationships because relationships to me is more than money is currency. I don't care about clothes. People see me with designer. I had family member last night. I had on designer last night and I was like, I don't care about this. I care about my purpose with God in life. You care more about this. I don't care about this. You know, Things attract people. Some people will never talk to you if you don't have on designer. That's not why. Buy it. But it's the reality. People may not even notice you if you never walk up and wear a certain thing because people were in reality shallow. But that's not why I do it. I do it. I don't care if it's $5 or $500. If I like it, I want it, I'm buying it. Period. If it makes sense. I'm not going to break the bank and go broke. But my point is this. In life, you're always going to be evolving or you should be evolving, right? And in new challenges and new things that you learn, people are going to come across the way. My thought process has always been, and I still live and believe this, that people are currency. Relationships are worth more than money. The only thing is, I think sometimes we get caught up in, you got to ask God, what is this person here for? Some people are seasonal. Some people are for a lifetime. And we have to learn the way we view people. We have to learn and think about what we invest or don't invest in people. You know, after talking to my cousin yesterday and, and she said something, so, you know, so many people wrote me off and I, she was like, they walked in on that version. I was like, dang, I, you know, I was praising her. I was happy about her accomplishment and her seeking and getting her. I was like, I was on cloud nine. That made me happy, you know, to see her in the place where she's at today. 
And, and, and we do that as people, you know, I don't say kids are bad. Nobody will ever tell me a kid is bad. If you a certain age, the kid ain't bad. The parent is bad because it's the parenting. It's not the kid, you know, and so many times we, we judge and we look at people based on our own experience instead of saying, what value does this person have? We, we value is the last thing we look at people. We either like them or we don't. You know, and then when you be like, well, why you don't like this person? It's like, that's not even really a legitimate reason. But I find peace in seeking God in everything. And saying, you know, what is the purpose of this person? And I think you should do that with everything, especially people. You get a coin on that one. I don't even think he was listening. Get two points on that one. Mm-hmm. Value people. You got the point. No, that's just something that's been dear to me lately. Just Value a lot people. of different stuff that I'm learning and and seeking God on, and it's like, well, why is this happening? Why is that? And and it'll be a whole spiritual podcast. Yeah, my thing is basically everybody's not you. I mean, the way you move is not the way that somebody else will move. And, and a lot of people make that bad decision because what they won't do, thinking somebody else won't do it to them. And, and that's a bad way to go. You know what I'm saying? You have the nice, nicest person give you the shirt off their back and now they're pissed off because that next person won't give them their shirt off their back. They don't move like that. And you can't expect everybody to move how you move. Very true. But within everything that comes new, there comes new experiences and new learning lessons that you have to learn. 2022 was a whole, <laughs> God slapped me around through 2022. It's like, look, I need you to get this. But I understand, you know, everything I went through in 2022, it didn't break me. It just made me stronger. And once I got the vision of what 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 is to come and the reason why is because you can't handle something down here. Or you can't handle something up here on the next level if you haven't conquered it down here. And so understanding what was going on and why I needed to reevaluate. Because before I'd be like, you know, if my statistician is cool, then she cool. But it's like, nah. And God was telling me where I'm taking you, you, you can no longer move like that. I still want you to see people as currency and see people as being valued, but you can't move like that. And I said, okay, I will go into it. But I, I think I'll probably talk about this in depth a year from now when everything is moving. It'll be like, oh, okay, that's what she was talking about on this podcast. But she be trying to tell me how I should move, though. Shit. What do you mean? You know, all the way I was moving. You shouldn't do this. You shouldn't be here. You shouldn't like. What do you mean? When you tell me, I listen. It took me a few times to get beat up a few times, but I did listen. So um, just the way you move is different. Everybody need to pay attention on the way you move. Let me specify, beat up spiritually, not beat up like he's putting his hands on me. So let's just, be like, mm-hmm. you got beat up. No, God had to slap me around a few times to basically let me, un- let me stop. Because well, God is if, not going to slap they, you around. They so they let me like stop God saying God physically abused you, I mean. No, they probably they thought really I was talking lost. about you. I mean, so shit. no, but let me say, because God is not, God is a gentle and loving God, but God will allow things to happen intentionally for you to look up and look at things. And all this year, he was allowing things to happen and, and was showing me you cannot connect with the people the same way that you've been connecting before. And. Okay, but we've we, we, we been, um, to not to cut you off, but to cut you off. Um, you just saying how you've been through it this year was you went through it. You learned lessons. God smacked you around. This will be a whole book. You know what I'm saying? And But yet you walked around with a smile. How, how, why is that? This is what I believe, right? I believe there's strength of talking about something after you've been through it because you could, it's, it's, you conquered it. And I also think what I go through doesn't define me. And I always feel like it could be worse And I think it's easy to profess God when everything is going right. But your true character shows like when your back is against the wall, how do you behave then? You know, it's easy to be like, oh, I'm patient and I'm kind and I'm loving when everything is going right. But when everything is going wrong, how patient are you? How loving are you? How kind are you? 
You know what I mean? And so for me, my faith was grounded in God. Like, yeah, people have no idea. I think some people think they seen you. I'm like, y'all don't even know what 2022, like just everything. Certain people got to see certain stuff, but it's like some people was like, I don't know, you was when I'm telling yeah, because I didn't talk about it, you know, because I felt like at first I thought it was an attack. I'm like, oh, the enemy attacking me. And then after like one of the last incidents happened, I was like, nah, this ain't an attack. The enemy can't touch me. Like you're allowing this stuff to happen. And I think that's the point that God wanted me to come to is like, no, I'm doing this. I'm allowing it because I want you to see what I'm showing you. And when I really got in his face, you know what I mean? When I really, really sat down and really, really got in his face and I've been in his face since then, not only did he show me why everything was happening, he also showed me what he was preparing me for. He also showed me he was aligning and moving people for where it was about to take. Man, I'm telling you. And she's talking about God, not me. (laughs) We just want to make sure they. This is a, something that a year or two from now I'll have to come back and touch because I don't want to get into it because I don't you know everything that God is. That's another thing I'm too honest, and many times I tell too much, and that's another thing God has showed me is like shoot her in the foot. I mean, stop saying and showing everything I'm telling you, and so for now it's just like okay, I'm not saying anything. I'm not. I, I'm I'm shut off. You know what I mean? I'm and so but. It's not making sense, but it, trust me, probably not even a year from now, it's going to make sense. Boom. Hit them with the drums. Like, yeah, makes sense in a year. So stay tuned in a year. I'll, I I'll just think, go pick up her book. I, mean, I don't she even, got some books. I don't even think it's going to be a year. I just know that God is preparing me for what's to come. Are you going to write excited. a book about this? This journey, yeah. I think I am. I think because- Am I going to be in your journey? Of course. You're a part of the journey, but- I think people need to understand, like, you know, I had a family member was like, dang, what he say? He said, you you go through stuff very well. And I'm like, yeah, because I don't. Nah, be- I know when she go through stuff. Be like, man up. Get up. <laughs> shit. You're my husband. Like, God damn. But you I'm said, open. man up, get up. But let's be real. I'm going to cry about that thing for 15 minutes. And after that, I'm just like, let's go. Because I'm not going to allow myself to stay there. You know, even when my cousin died. Remember when we went out to eat to a uh, yard house, I was laying in the bed and I started to cry and I felt depression coming up and I jumped out the bed. I was like, I, I told him, I was like, Hey, I got to get up. Like Who, we got to Me you, or God? You. Cause y'all, you getting us confused. If you I jumped up and told my husband, Demetrius, I have <laughs> to get up. I have to get out of here. And he took me out to yard house because I couldn't stand that place. And that's one thing about me. And I, and honestly, I understand now that has, that was a part of my childhood trauma though. It's like, I never was in the mode of, I I was allowed to stay there. I was like the always, I was the youngest of my mom's kids, but I was the go-to, you know, it was like, everything was kind of dependent on me. And so when everything was going on, I I never had, I never was allowed to grieve or cry or it was like, nah, this is happening in in, in real time. Like you got to get up. It was like survival skills. And even though I still have that mindset, I have a more healthy mindset. I allow myself to cry, but I don't allow myself to stay there. Yeah, I guess a lot of people deal with grief different because I honestly, I don't even know how I deal with grief. I think I just forget about it. You Move shut on. off. No, you don't. You shut mm-hmm. off. I don't you, know. You shut, you shut off. And I know to leave you alone and give you your time. Um, but for me, when I'm going through something, Sometimes people don't know that I'm going through something because I allow myself to have moments because I understand that I can't just shut off because I still got stuff to do, you know, and and that's not a reality of life. Um, And I think the blessing of even going back to when you said, how did you always smile when you were everything that was going on is because I believe if we say we serve a God and he is who he says he is, we should always walk as conquerors and not in defeat. That doesn't mean we don't go through. We have trials and tribulations and we hurt, but I won't let it defeat me. You know, I'll have a moment a day, a few days where I'm upset about something. But after that, it's like I'm done talking about it. It's over. Let's go. Let's go. Next topic, then. Next topic, then. I just say if you don't take anything from this 
podcast take just you know evaluate reevaluate the way you look at people you know and i stop putting your own emotions and shit especially when you see shit on the internet i think that's why the internet is a, 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 a big booming business Oh, emotions. You know what I'm saying? Yes, people buy off like, emotion. Yeah. People get in relationships off emotion. People make hard oh, decisions oh, off oh, emotion. We just, we just said uh, this. I see it a lot of, like, people go through relationship issues by watching other fake relationships on Instagram. Because they it's want like, that. You, you put in a standard on your man by you seeing a fake video on Instagram. It's, it's, so, it's so crazy. Not even your man. Your man or your woman. You know what I'm saying? It's like... Social media is dictating a whole lot of shit in real life. But that's why social media cannot, and I, I will show you my time spent on social media. If you get over 30 minutes a day, it's a problem for me because this is my thing. Social media is not paying me. So therefore, there's no need for me to be on social media like that. But think about it, how it's curving and and, and influence everything. Well, Facebook is paying me, but it, it ain't is, enough for me to be on social it's, media it's, like but it's, that. But it's, it's influenced everything, you know? It just, it just from the color you you do your Christmas tree, just because you've seen some videos and look nice on TikTok. I don't, well, you know well, what I'm well, saying? Well, wait, like, wait, wait, wait. I don't think that has anything to do with, because obviously, obviously, shopping works like this. People like, they copied me. No, they didn't. Shopping works like this. The only way you're going to buy something is if you see it first. True. The only, I mean, that's just getting ideas. That doesn't mean it's dictating your life because the only way I've ever wanted a G-Wagon, I had to see somebody else driving it. I didn't go to the dealership. I was like, oh, that car is nice. I didn't want it because they had it. It was because I saw it. You see some shoes. It's not that you want them with that person. Well, some people do. Now, want sometimes, people sometimes have, but it's, it's advertising. The swag of but, it, hold on, put it but, on. But this is the thing. Everybody in this world is a walking billboard. True. And you're walking a billboard for free. And we all walk in billboards for free because it's something that you're wearing you or doing yeah. that you're promoting unknowingly and somebody wants it because they've seen it on you. True. This is, it's branding and marketing at its finest for big corporations. And this is why I said social media is a big influence because a lot of people no, don't it's realize influence. they don't realize what they're promoting. You know what I'm saying? People don't no. understand that they're promoting. Yeah, exactly. I'm just having fun. I'm just doing this, but they don't understand. You're promoting factors. that. You're promoting that hotel. Mm -hmm. You're promoting that car. You're promoting that restaurant. You're promoting the shoes. You're we're we're walking billboards. I say that all the time. You are promoting, and that's why I'm mindful. As a matter of fact, I went to Dolce and Gabbana, and I I'm just I love their tennis shoes because their tennis shoes are always different. I just love their tennis shoes. That's just me personally, right? Um, and somebody. Okay, so let let me switch gears because I'm I'm jumping around. I love their tennis shoes. So I saw I love all on the tennis shoes. I love fashion. I love, and then it came to word. It said, I, I said, what is this? I asked the word, what what does it say? Because I couldn't make it out. It was like kind of incursive because I'm like, I gotta I gotta know what the representation of what's what these shoes are saying. You know, if it say I'm loving Satan or something like that, I can't buy these. So what is it saying? And then you'll have people like somebody was on your thread. Louis Louis Vuitton, they 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 had a zoo for slaves or something like that. Now, I didn't know that. Now, you know, I didn't research it. I may research it. But this is the thing that annoys me with people. People always try to find fault in what you're doing, right? But if you go in the history of anything that you buy, bank. eat, wear, bank, sleep, wherever, it's going to be some history attached to that. So this is my thing. If you're not researching the history of everything you wear, drive, the gas you use, because somebody invented that. Somebody's family owns that. Yes. So if you're not going to research everything you consume and do, don't tell me about what somebody did and what. I don't want to hear it. That part, you know what I'm saying? That's another thing of always trying to find fault in people and what they do. That local gas station you go to. Every the family day. may yeah, be a part of yeah. a cartel or murders or, or, or racist. Like, if you're not going to research everything you do in life, don't get on my status telling me what a designer did or didn't do. If you're telling me for information purposes, great. But don't tell me I'm wearing something and trying to make it a fault because you're looking for something negative. Because if we look at everything we consume, I'm telling you, it's history by, behind every owner or family that everything we eat, watch, drink, whatever. Trust me, it is. Amen. I'll give you a coin on that one.
You taking all my coins today. No, I'm just saying it, it just people no, it, it, look they for just, fault. It's a natural way to hate. I mean shit, at the end of the day, they just You could do the yeah. everything in the world for someone. Some person get mad at this one thing. You're a horrible person. You know, one of my prayers this year has been, I want everything exposed. I want every lie on me that was told. I want every assassination of character. I want everything I've been, I want everything exposed because you can't keep just lying on people and doing stuff to people and doing things and don't think God is not going to uncover and show your hand. But exposed to who? I want the truth revealed. To who? What does it matter? Vindication. But if they don't got a voice, what does it matter? Let me tell you something about me. There's never been a lie on, told on me that's never came to light. But what I'm trying to say is, you got this one person, got a million followers, made a lie on you, and they say, hey, I was lying on this person so their audience could reach. It doesn't come to but light if this, if this like one, that. If this person don't have an audience, but they just go with the one person here, here, and there, and, and their lie be exposed, Who's actually seeing the exposing? You know what I'm saying? It's not about it's who like, sees. It's not about who sees. It's just like what's done in the dark will come to the light. It will come to the light, but actually, who's going to see the light? I'm not worried that, about... It's like why somebody do something to you in, in, in public, but they want to apologize you in private. Oh, that happens where, to me where, all the time. I mean, where that is the, this is not justice. The, that, you know what I'm saying? Where's the that justice at? happens to me. People will do this and then come caught, and it's like, but this is not what you're telling people, though. But you know, I take it in stride. I don't say nothing. I don't. I don't out it. I just, just whatever it is, what it is. But trust me, stuff like that happens all the time. But what I'm saying is, I'm not worried about who sees. You know, even with the person's heart is convicted. If I'm wrong, I will stand on a mountaintop, and I don't have a problem with telling you, her, him, they, the world, I was wrong. I don't have a problem with apologizing, saying, you know what, I shouldn't have did that. You know, because if I do something wrong, I actually feel bad about it. Like if I'm wrong and, and, and it is detrimental or hurt somebody, it bothers me to my core. So it just trips me out when people can wrong people and it's like, and you can still sleep. Like you you can't be a child of God to me when you can walk in a certain way and do things and not feel bad about it, especially when it's brought to your attention. Because again, I believe in action versus intent. Because some things you may be doing something and you're not even aware that you're doing it. But once it's brought to your attention, your attention, and you feel nothing at all and you keep shifting blame, I don't know if you're really rocking with God like that. You go to church every day of the week. You can say you love, but I just personally don't believe because God convicts those that he loves. God chastises his kids. So if you're wrong, he's going he's gonna to convict you and show you that. you. He ain't going to condemn you, but he will convict you. So when I see people that got this, got that, got that, and you know you wrong, and you know you lying, and you and you just continued, I can't respect it. Me personally, I can't respect it. Because, again, if I'm wrong, I'm going to stand on the mountaintop and tell you I'm wrong, and I'm going to apologize so you understand that I'm really empathetic, sympathetic, and I feel bad about what I did. <laughs> Whatever. This ain't a circus act, dude. <laughs> That's not a circuit. I, they do that on um, Apollo, not in Apollo, um, Arsenio Hall. No, but I, I'm serious. Like, I'm just so, I'm on 10. I'm happy. I think the um, listeners and viewers could hear the um, passion in you. And I'm boys. happy when God puts some stuff in perspective for me. I'm just, man, y'all have no idea. Y'all hear the passion when she I talk about no God? Idea. That's that passion. God really got me through this now year. Now, the thing is, is that passion when she talking about her man? Yeah, and mm. I love my husband. Do you talk about me like that to your homies and shit? My homies, I don't have mm. homies. So you don't talk to you don't talk about me like this. Huh? You're funny. <laughs> you don't I'm this is a serious question. Do you talk about your man how you talk about God? I think when you're passionate Is and you you're, passionate about me? If I was if I wasn't passionate about you, I wouldn't <laughs> be married to you. You still didn't ask the question. You passionate about me? Of course. Mm. Do you talk about me when I'm not around like this? Like this? Of course. It mm -hmm. depends on what I'm talking about. <laughs> I think oh, when, when you're passionate about something, like, and, and people can mistake, too, my passion for anger. My, and it's like, no, I'm just, I'm really passionate. Or this, you know what I mean? Doesn't mean 
I have a complicated personality because I think sometimes people, even when I joke, they'd be like, I don't know if you're joking or not because you're, you're not a Yeah, you're not a joking person. Now, see, I'm joke, I joke. It's, that's not your personality. You know what? I sent Jamie a joke. <laughs> he texted. <laughs> and she was like, she wouldn't say anything like this. And I was like, I knew you was going to think that. But I'm learning in life, too, to be more lighthearted. To not take everything so serious. Um, and I think it's throwing people off in this season for me because how I'm joking and I'm playing. And because I've learned to not take myself so serious, not take the world so serious. Not It's okay to let your hair down sometimes and just have fun. Um, I, like even at the party when I was dancing, they was like, Whoa, she dancing? I just need dancing. She, you know what I mean. And then I kind of looked back and had to go delete a video because I'm like, uh, that ain't the 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 song I necessarily want to represent to what I'm posting. But um, it's kind of like, no, I'm just in a new place. And I think, and and this is the thing again. What my little cousin said last night: you walked in on that version. You know, I'm always gonna be Sunny. I'm always my my man. I don't have mass to change. And some people that you see them in a day, somebody completely different. What you see is really what you get. Um, but I'm just learning to live and enjoy life. The time I'm saying, man, God has shown me so much. I don't know if I'm gonna do a book on this, or there may be a time where I have a speaking engagement and speak on this. But this journey of my life right here, this year was hard for me. People don't know, like, I had contemplated throwing in the towel, like, not on life, not suicide, but just quitting some things. And I'm just like, you know, I I was just at the point where I was tired of, like, I'm tired of people. You know what I mean? Because in my personal life, people don't have access to me like that. I don't deal with a lot of people. And, you know, when you run a company, you come across so many different people in business, so many different staff. In and out, you, 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 it's just so many growing pains, so many. And I was like, God, I'm tired of people. Like I'm just done with people. And he's like, nah, you can't do that. But this is what I need you to do. That's good. My 2022 will be good to me. That's, I ain't got no complaints. You're not about to level up like me though. <laughs> That's not because I've been leveling up shit. <laughs> oh, hold on. That's a point. Cause nigga, I've been leveling up. Man, well, God but- got store. You have no idea. That's great. I had to learn things for this next walk. No, I mean the things you was learning. I've been trying to instill in you for the longest. No, like because you I already just didn't had listen it. To me. I just needed in. A, you know this is the thing, and that's where we balance out. She's no. like the kind hearted, and I'm the asshole. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, I'm not a pushover. That, I'm not a. The, let's let's keep it clear. You I'm more not, passionate and, and I'm not more, a no. What they they compassionate. For I'm people. very compassionate. You know what I'm saying? I'm you very you want to you take on people's problems like it's your problem. Like, hold on, no shit. No way, give a fuck. You know Th- what I'm this saying? is my thing. I'm I'm not a pushover. I'm not naive. But again, I believe relationships are currency. I don't see. I people... believe relationships are currency either. But I ain't gonna put up with the bullshit. Listen to what I'm saying. I won't either. But listen, but I give people the benefit of the doubt because I'm always gonna say I ain't gonna give you the benefit of the doubt. I'm gonna give everybody the benefit of the doubt. But this is what I was doing that was wrong, is that in every setting, there's different type of relationships. It's it's different in different settings. I don't deal with a whole lot of people. When you run in a business, you're dealing, but God gave me strategy to say, you can't do that anymore. He gave me that. He showed me that. He showed me everything I needed to do, and I'm happy and I'm grateful for it because I understand it now. You know, because what I don't like to be is, Different people in different settings. Okay, so how would the people learn from what you've been through? Like, what what kind of advice would you give them? Like, See God in every in every every person, every person. You well, know, what if God ain't communicating with them that way? Okay, well? so maybe they don't have a God communicate. Maybe they don't have a like, relationship. Well, okay, so well, this, this is what I would say. This is what I would have to say. <clears throat> people are either a blessing or a curse. Some people are going to come into your life because the enemy sent them. Some people are going to come into your life because the God sent them. You got to know what purpose or position that it plays. Well, how do we know? You know well, I mean, honestly, it's, there's it's no like, reason how you can know here? except you really tapped into God. Now, that's just the reality. There is no way around God so, in this. So because certain, God. So what about, I, I would say, when you start seeing red flags. And then sometimes you're so close to a person, you don't notice the red flags because you don't want to see listen, it. But listen, li- but listen, but listen, but listen, but listen. The person could be an all-around great person. 
there doesn't even have to be red flags. But that doesn't mean this person is supposed to be up close and personal with you. This is what I'm saying. This could be a great person. It sounds like it should get confusing. Listen to what I'm saying. It could be a great... Okay, for example, we have housekeepers. We're not beneath them. We're not above them. We're not viewing them based on they clean our house, right? They're great people. I trust them. That's why I let them in my house. But that doesn't mean I need to invite them to the barbecue. That doesn't mean I'm supposed to have a personal relationship with them. That just means they're here to do a job and that's to clean the house. Okay. I'll go to the bank. I bake there. The teller may be an awesome person. She may be sweet. There be may, there may not be any red flags. My purpose in connect with her just based on God is to just smile every time I see her and, and, and tell her something positive. That doesn't mean she's meant to come to the barbecue. But what if she is? How do you know? You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. It gets tricky. It's like, oh, look, I met this great person at the grocery store. I just invited him over for dinner. I don't think you should do that anyway. How do you know? I don't think you should do that anyway. Who's who's for you and against you? And then that's where it gets difficult at because it's hard out here. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's not against you. This okay, this is it's not a everything. You just said either they're a blessing or a curse. If you a curse, you're against me. Yeah, but what I'm saying is just because somebody's a okay, for example, it I went to I went to Tuesday. My friend kept trying to get me to go to the Zoom class, trying to get me to go to the Zoom class. Went to the Zoom class. The instructor, later on, she told me she saw me and was like, I hope she's in my class. Didn't know we walked in at the same time. Didn't know she was the instructor. She ended up saying some stuff. God had me tell her some stuff. Boom. Just by me. And I'll probably never go to her Zoom class again. But that connection was for me to tell her what she needed to hear, what God needed to have her hear. That's it. You know what I'm saying? Something may just be. A, yes, you saying that's it. But ain't that ain't you going to hook up with her again? Her? Yeah. So what made that decision of, OK, this is not just an structure. Now I'm going to reach out and, and connect. Because what you know I was what already this praying is, for. So when I was already praying for something and seeking God on something before I got there. Right. I had been talking to God about this for like two weeks. So when I went to the class and she opened up and said something and then the exchange, we both needed something from each other. It was a connection. And when she start, start talking to her about God, everything was so on point. She knew. So basically people, if you ain't speaking to God and praying in your prayer closet, basically you going to be out here. Fucked. Basically. This is what it sounds. And this is why I don't fuck with nobody because I'm not in my prayer closet and because I ain't taking people, a risk on nobody. <laughs> there, this, 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 this is this is the thing too, though, you know. Um, and it was crazy because when I was talking to her, it was like everything, you know. Very when you're giving, you can be taken advantage of a lot of times because where other people have motives, you're 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 moving out of pure intentions, and so I'll give to a stranger. And it's not because, like, you know, there's things I've done that people would never know about. I'm not the type to go feed the homeless and do a whole video about it. You will never see that. Yeah, see, he content. You will never you will never see what I do because what I do is between me and God. It's not for the world to see because I'm doing it from my heart. I'm not doing it to be seen. So a lot of stuff I do, you will never know about. And it's intended for you to never know about because I'm not doing it for recognition. I'm doing it because that's my heart. But many times when you have a heart, people take advantage but, of so your you, kindness. You, 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 hold on. Hold on. Hold what? on. Pump the motherfucking brakes. Because <clears throat> you could do shit and record it and be it be coming from your heart. You know what I'm saying? I'm not. So you can't I'm knock not the people that, and, that, that not. got it because content created and doing it also inspires others to make a move and get off their asses and do shit. So it's it's a double-sided you know what I'm saying? You just because what you do in private, that's I, I feel like that's feeding you personally within something. That's feeding this God. Is, this is what I'm doing privately. It, it's self gratification for you. But when you're doing it <laughs> and, and, and making the content and inspiring others to get off their ass and move, that's a whole different element. So you can't say they they ain't doing it from their heart either. So I'm gonna have to disagree on that one. Did I say they weren't doing it from their heart? Yeah, you saying the people that you know what I'm saying something you they could rewind. I it, said because out. I'm. Me not doing it. I, I can't speak for. So it, it's. Listen. It's, you're getting a gratification. Listen. Within yourself. Listen. I get gratification for helping people, period, because that's what I was created to do. 
So if you wasn't getting the gratification, would you still do it? No, listen, in life, who does things when they don't get gratification for it? They do it because they have to. I get gratification by doing whatever God tell me to do because I know it's a reward from him in the end. I'm pleasing my father. Is there times that there's things I don't want to do? 100%. But there's still gratification to understand, okay, God, I'm doing what you would have me to do. But going back, I don't knock nobody, the whatever they're doing, because again, I don't look at action. It's intent. It's the heart. What are the motives behind it? I said for me, when God has me do something, it's not for show. When I go pray, I don't pray. I go into the closet. That's between me and my father. I'm not doing it for you to say she's a spiritual person. She's a good person. She gives. She's. I'm doing it for me and God. Okay. So that's what I'm saying. So whatever you do is what you do. I can't say what you do. I know what my heart tells me to do. Okay. Yeah, because you like, I'm trying to not know. Whatever, if that's what you feel like you need to do. I was just do, trying to clarify. I ain't, I ain't fed no homeless. What I'm saying for me is not for show. It's because I genuinely really live this, talk this, walk this in public, in private, in real life. So you saying you do it to please your father. Well, that's what we, that's, that's everything we should be doing, right? Because he's the only judge and jury. That's like a kid doing something just to please their parents. No. That's what you sound no, like. No, but at the end of the day. You really don't want to do it, but you want to please God. Okay. You really don't want to go to work, but you're going to go to work. Why? Get paid. Because you got to, exactly. I want to buy them new Jordans. There's a reward, right? There's a gratification. Exactly. My gratification is grounded in God. So you're going to do everything to please him. Of course. You don't see something wrong with that? Now, that's a whole because other it's podcast. Like, it's like kids doing stuff to please their parents. That's the same kind of situation. No, 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 no. no. Fall the into. difference is. I'm, uh, I'm going to this school to please my mom. That's different. I'm, I'm going here to please. That's different. I really don't want to do it, but let I'm going to let please me, them. Let me, you know show, let me show you the difference. Let me show you the difference. Our parents are flawed. Why are they flawed? Because they're people. We all have flaws. God is flawless, Right. So everything that God has me do is going to be the benefit, not only for the world, but for me. Everything that God tells you to do for you is beneficial to you. Everything your parents tell you to do is not necessarily beneficial to you. To, to It may be beneficial to them. God is an unselfish God. God is not going to do things for us out of his selfishness. Your parents is going to tell you to do stuff out of their own selfishness. That is the difference. Your parents are flawed. God is unflawed. He's flawless. And on that note, y'all, y'all tapped in. We about to close this one on. Sydney closes up. Until next time, continue to break cycles.